Hi friends, welcome to the channel of Learning by Doing. Today I'm going to talk about a very important programming language called Java. And uh, coming to the Java, everyone have many doubts about the Java. That's why I'm going to tell you about the basics of Java in this uh, video. That is, first of all, what is Java? Everyone used to think, uh, uh, everyone saying that Java is a very important language, very, uh, very useful language when we go into the software industry. Every applications are running in the Java and all these questions, blah, 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 were running in the in our society everyone talking about java like this but everyone gets tensed about uh, java because oh my god java is a very big language it's having lots of packages in it and it's having lots of apis in it how can i learn the java just remove all those things and just listen java is a very simple language if you are willing to learn it i'm coming to to the basics of java then <coughs> what is java Java is one of the programming language. It was just mainly de uh, dev uh, designed to develop the internet connections. What is uh, everything nowadays was running in the internet. So it's mainly uh, uh, designed for the internet connections. That's why Java got uh, this much uh, popularity uh, in our society. Okay, guys, and it is also an independent language and it doesn't depend on uh, it, it is having very less dependencies on it. And what are the things which makes the programmers that C and C++ programming languages are not uh, that much popular? That is because the C and C++ languages only support the standalone applications and it does not support the internet applications like remote and network applications and all this. I will tell you in the further video uh, what is meant by the standalone application and the internet applications. And next coming to just as, as usual, just as the history of Java, this was uh, this was uh, developed by James Gosling and uh, this was supported, I mean, uh, maintaining by the Sun Microsystems. Very first, the Java was named as OAK, OAK. Uh, and uh, this was uh, further it was named as Java what is the reason they first introduced the Java as OAK and again then they changed the name as Java means the OAK name was already registered by some other members when they uh, went for the registration of the Java so they changed their name as Java and it was developed in the 1995 May 20 and uh, and I'm going to talk about these hard Java, JDK evolutions and J2SC in the further slides. And uh, Java, what is the definition of Java and Java, how Java uh, looks? I mean, it is very simple language. These are all the features of Java. Simple language it, and it is in a very high level secured language and also a multi-threaded platform independent all these things object oriented language and everyone thinks that uh, uh, what they uh, what is the abbreviation of Java. Uh, in the HTML classes, we discussed that HTML is an acronym and it is nothing but a hypertext markup language. Then, but here, what is Java? It is an acronym? No. Is this having any extension? No. It doesn't have any extension. It is not an acronym too. It doesn't have any abbreviation also. What is the history of uh, making the name as Java means? Um, it, it refers to a hot aromatic drink coffee. It's refer what is the meaning of Java means? It's a coffee beans actually. Java beans means it's nothing but a coffee beans. And that's why they put the icon is also as a coffee cup. Why they uh, preferably put the coffee cup means the Sun Microsystems was developed this Java and the in a place where that was near to the coffee uh, form coffee form where they uh, grow the coffee beans and all this that was near to their uh, <coughs> near to their company where they used to develop this uh, java program and all these things establishment whenever they were uh, developing they used to see the gardens there and they that's why this was the history that why they put the java as the name for this programming language because they just uh, uh, near to their place there was any uh, coffee beans form so they uh, they just 
as usually uh, as commonly they put as java there is not having any uh, specific uh, uh, history for this putting the name as java and why java is called a simple language in the features first uh, in the first and foremost i said it is a simple language because it just looks similar to our c and c++ languages in its syntaxes and in the c and the c++ language we have many features which looks complex confusing and unsafe like uh, uh, we are very uh, tired of uh, when uh, we are listening about it because we get confused when you are working on pointers structures unions these are all in the c language and multiple inheritance which is in c++ language and overloading concepts which are in c++ language these are all make some confusions and unsafe unsafe is nothing but it, that doesn't look secured when we wrote the program so because of this uh, they 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 removed all these concepts from C and C++ and they introduced some simple and very secured concepts in the Java. So that's why we call it the Java as a very very simple language. What is mean by a platform independent language, platform dependent language? First of all let me tell you what is mean by a platform. Platform is nothing but a hardware or a software where the program is going to be run. And we are all well known that uh, the computer is the combination of the hardware and the software. What is the hardware in it is just the hardware parts of it like CPU and keyboard it all uh, links with the program right and also what is meant by the software is the main operating system of our in our computer that is Windows, Mac, Linux etc all this what is mean by platform is it is in hardware or the software in which the program runs it is the platform it is in hardware platform and it, it is the software platform where the program is run and the computer is also a platform which is the combination of software and the hardware parts in it and you're all well uh, known about the platform right then what does mean by platform dependent we are all saying uh, from past days and uh, everyone will say that c and c plus plus languages are platform dependent and the java is platform independent so it becomes very famous and all these things when they when we listen to that we think that i even doesn't know what is platform dependent and independent his easily saying it then I'll tell you the answer for that that is what is platform dependent and what is platform independence means when a program was compiled in one operating system that is for example in Windows operating system and when we took the program and ran in the run the program in Mac operating system or in the Linux operating system or in the Ubuntu operating system but it doesn't work but it only works in the Windows operating system that is the program was depending only on Windows operating system to get the output that is nothing but platform dependent language the language which is getting depended with the operating system is nothing but the platform dependent language the C and C++ languages are the platform dependent languages where the C uh, C language if we run the C language as one operating system and we can't run the same C program in uh, other operating systems we need to write again the code for other operating systems so this is nothing but the platform dependent language I hope you understood and next we are going to talk about the platform independent language what does mean by a platform independent language is when we run a program in one operating system and we just took the program code and runs in other operating systems like Mac or Ubuntu or any any other operating system it executes and gives your output in their operating system also 
that means it doesn't depending the program what you are wrote in one system doesn't depends on its operating system it's nothing but the platform that you are used there the software that you used in I mean OS is the software right operating system that you used in one PC is not dependent to that program the program is not depending on the OS of your PC it is independent of your PC that's why whenever you take your program to other operating systems and you are running in that pro uh, that program in other operating systems it's easily running and giving your output then how how it's running means the languages like java are developed as the platform independent languages means that they are those languages doesn't depend on the operating system but one thing they depend on the jvm that is nothing but the java virtual machine the java virtual machine is dependent on the operating system when we uh, the Java code was dependent on the Java virtual machine and Java virtual machine was different for the different operating systems I mean let me clear you that Java virtual machine is platform dependent but Java program is platform independent if we wrote a Java program we need to install their supportive Java virtual machine uh, which is independent which is dependent to our operating system i mean windows is having its own jvm and mac is having its own jvm and linux is having its own jvm but the java program depend doesn't depends on these windows mac and linux it just links with the java virtual machine which is support to it and it runs that's it this is nothing but the platform independent platform dependence this is uh, a sample c uh, code when we run in um, in our compile uh, windows compilation it then uh, gives the output as exe uh, executable code and that is also known as the machine code it, it also depends on the hardware and the software of our system and but what is meant by platform independence means the java virtual mission will be depends or uh, is a dependent but the java program is an independent language so it produces the java virtual mission produces the byte code and by using this byte code wherever you go uh, i mean uh, in whatever the operating system it just uh, produces the output without depending on the operating system creating and compiling programs how we compile the programs in the java language is it is just as java c file is nothing but the name of your uh, program and it will comes with the dot java extension and this is what the command that were going to be used for the compiling the java programs and what is mean and how we go going to execute the applications means after compiling the program we'll get the byte code from that and using that byte code we are going to get the output by using the virtual machine which is dependent on our uh, operating system that that was executed using the command called java the class name of your byte code i mean the class name of your java program not the name that was given for the java program the class name that was given for the java program so it is better to give the class name and the name of your java program as same similar this is a simple example of it and then I'm going to tell you some more things about the Java applications. We used to, I already said to you, right, I'll tell you what is the standalone application and what is the internet applications. What is the standalone applications is nothing but uh, when we uh, wrote a program and 
with the this is in our server itself and it is getting the local call but it doesn't get the call from the internet this is nothing but the standalone application i'll tell you an example that uh, <coughs> if you are having an office communicator with you i mean like in all the office members were going to be get communicated through this office communicator and it is uh, working through in your server system and you will get the and you will get communicated for the, the other the colleagues in your office through this office communicator but you does not get communicated with uh, the person who is not in your office that is nothing but uh, if you can communicate within your office means if you are working in one company i'm i'll just saying as company 1 uh if you are communicating the with the colleagues in the company 1 and you are, you doesn't know about the company 3 and all these there are all other companies and you can't able to communicate with the company 3 members in your op in your uh, office communicator that is nothing but the stand alone application which was given for your only for your server for your server uh, let us coming to the college college uh is also uh, having uh, some of the communicators i don't think so but uh, for example let me see if you done uh, something uh, uh, web programming languages uh, and you done a web page for your college and it is a, if you you can pass it uh, but that was stored in your college server and you doesn't get uh, the connection with the internet for it because you need to get the domain name for your uh, 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 web page that you are created uh, for getting to be uh, gone into the remote system that is nothing but the stand alone application but whenever you got uh, your web page to be get connected with your remote system by um, by getting your own domain name and all this then it is nothing but the internet applications what are the terminologies that are going to be used in the programming languages are everyone used to say that source code source code source code what is mean by the source code mainly these words are going to be used when you are went into the it industries they used to say that source code what is mean by the source code means developer written program whoever the developer in your in your company they write some program according to their programming languages i mean i said to them to write the program in java then they wrote some program in java that is nothing but the source code what is the compiled code compiler generated program that comes from the source code that is uh, i wrote a java program and i given to the compiler to compile my program means it generates another program that from the source code that is nothing but a byte code the byte code was the output of my java code right that is nothing but the compiled code and then we are coming to the executable code what is mean by the executable code whenever you given this byte code it generates uh, another code called dot exe files class dot exe files so what is mean by this dot exe files is the code which was going to be understand for your operating system only the os understandable and readable code it is nothing but the executable code and what is mean by the execution it is a process of running compiled code to get output this is all the terminologies of your programming languages and i'm going to tell you one more thing that sun microsystems was developed this java i already said to you and they developed this java and the concepts of this java so they divided the concepts of java in three variations that is java micro edition and the java standard edition and the java entrepreneur edition what is mean by the java me that is java micro edition for developing the mobile applications we use the java micro edition and what is mean by the standard edition for developing the desktop and window applications windows applications we use the java standard ed edition and what is mean by java w that is entrepreneur ed edition is for developing the internet and 
enterprise applications we use that java doubly so thanks for watching this video if you like my video subscribe to my channel